The New Orleans Saints have had their time. Let's just call it how it is. Sean Payton, Drew Brees came in and changed the entire outlook of an organization. And lots of wins, great memories, Super Bowl championship. And that was years and years in the past now. And the reality is, is the New Orleans Saints are not that same team. The New Orleans Saints are in one of those really awkward positions to me where they have the best head coach they've ever had. Yes, I will say even better than Jim Mora because ultimately they made it to an NFC Championship game in Peyton's first year and then three years later won a Super Bowl. Mora didn't do that. Mora did great things for New Orleans, but Sean Payton helped bring them a Lombardi trophy. Therefore, he's better. And also knowing that maybe the time of Sean Payton in New Orleans is drawing to an end, but just because you feel like that time is drawing to an end doesn't mean that you're going to find an adequate replacement. You could be sending off the guy that's been there for going into his 12th season now, the guy who is the best head coach your organization ever has had and could potentially ever have. And then when you put him in lockstep with the future first ballot Hall of Famer, beyond question to me, and no offense to Reggie White or anybody else that's been a free agent signing over the years, for what he meant to the New Orleans Saints organization, what he meant to the city of New Orleans, what he meant to the National Football League, and so many other things, Drew Brees is the greatest free agent signing in NFL history. Period. Cut and dry. Your arguments are irrelevant. Irrelevant. Drew Brees has been everything to that Saints franchise for now going into his 12th season. And as soon as he leaves the National Football League and retires, five years later, he will be a first ballot inductee into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, as he damn well should be. And you're at that point with Drew Brees where you know you're coming to the end of the line with him. Even though he's an incredibly productive player, even still in his late 30s, a guy that threw for over 5,200 yards last year and 30-something touchdowns, the point is the guy still has an arm, you know that there's a diminishing window of return here. You know that it's only a matter of time before he either A, can no longer physically do it, or B, no longer wants to do it. Or C, potentially worst of all, You have to force him out the door because you don't want him to do it anymore. And for the Saints, and I speak to this because their situation to me is kind of unique. In in the history of that organization and everything that organization did for so many years that was so terrible, you kind of have to ride out the string with Sean Payton and Drew Brees as long as they choose to be be there because who else are you going to bring in that's better? That's just the way it is. You know, and I look at it this way for Saints fans. You know, I don't envision great things for your team in 2017, and I don't know if a lot of you do either. Um, but just know that you have a Hall of Fame quarterback, and you better enjoy every possible game you can seeing him, because once he's gone, you don't know what's coming around that corner. Now, to the Saints' credit, over the past couple of years. They've realized that they have a limited window with Drew Brees at the top. And they know that their defense was absolutely atrocious. Their defense has held them back from so many things. Their defense had to get better. Even if that came at the expense of getting rid of guys like Jimmy Graham and so on and so forth. They had to get better on the defensive side of the ball. Excuse me. And over the past couple of seasons, you've seen a Saints team try, try to get better on the defensive side of the ball. And... You know, also understanding from a team standpoint, because they would tie up so much into Drew Brees and a couple other players, that they could potentially run into some cap constraints, they were going to need to re-emphasize the draft more than they had in previous seasons. And you saw that in 2016, you saw that here again in 2017. You know, ending up trading away Brandon Cooks to get the 32nd overall pick, which he turned into an offensive tackle, Ryan Ramchick. Taking Marshawn Lattimore, the corner from Ohio State, with the 11th overall pick. Bringing in other guys like Alvin Kamara and a couple of defensive players like Anzalone and Hendrickson. You could see an increased emphasis of importance on the draft because 
this Saints organization knew that you, they don't have the flexibility to go out there and bring in a bunch of people via free agency. It's just not a reality for them. So the best way you're going to get better is to draft better. And I will say they've at least tried to. I don't know how well they've actually done. Now, looking at the Saints roster, what do you have going for it? Well, pretty much everything on the offensive side of the ball. you got Drew Brees. He is still an elite quarterback. He is one of the best in the business. He is a future first ballot Hall of Famer. He is a guy that you could count on to play every game pretty much. He's a guy that you can count on to be able to throw the ball 40, 45 times a game if you need him to and actually lead your team to victory. He's a guy that's been around the block. He's a leader. He's got championship experience. He is the epitome of a franchise quarterback. So when you start off with that guy, you already have an advantage over more than half the teams in the National Football League. Then when you back that up with some talent at the running back position, you already had Mark Ingram there, a guy that frankly at times probably needed more opportunities in the running game to provide more balance. But now you throw in a veteran, a star, a potential Hall of Famer like Adrian Peterson into the mix, and even if it's Ingram and Peterson splitting carries, that's a Saints running game that should be able to do some damage and take some real pressure off of Drew Brees in the passing game. And then, for, in terms of the passing game, I still like what they have at the skill positions, even with the trading away of Brandon Cooks. You still have Michael Thomas. Once he comes back from his suspension, you still have Willie Sneed. You've, you've got talent there at the receiving position. You know, if Fleener plays better in 2017, there's another boost to the offense. The bottom line is, as we all know, the Saints offense can score points and score points in bunches and score points in a hurry at times if they need to. But they have their problems. I still think their pass defense is not up to snuff. I still think their pass defense, due to lack of ability to consistently generate pass rush and a lack of uh, experience and overall talent in the secondary, will lead to some major problems on the pass defense side. Even though their run defense has been improving a little bit, and I expect it to improve a little bit more here in 2017, their pass defense, I still think, is going to hold them back and still put a lot of pressure on Drew Brees in the passing game. Then, from a philosophy standpoint, I look at it and I say, who's going to replace Brandon Cooks? Who's going to be that guy that can help you stretch the field vertically down the field? You hope that a Michael Thomas does, but you know, at some point in time, you can only trade away so many of these big-name guys before that eventually caps up, catches up with you. That could be a belief in the arrogance of the system and not believing enough in the talent. You got rid of Jimmy Graham. Now you've gotten rid of Brandon Cooks. I mean, these are guys that were integral parts of your offense in recent years. And yes, while well, you still have like a Michael Thomas and you have a Willie Sneed, at some point in time that does catch up with you. And then offensively, I worry about the commitment to the run. The best thing that could happen for Drew Brees at this stage of his career and for Sean Payton at this stage of his tenure in New Orleans is for the running game to be important enough to where both Sean Payton and Drew Brees can kind of get the hell out of their own way and not be too overly committed to the passing game so consistently. You've got Mark Ingram, you've got Adrian Peterson, you've got a third-round pick in Alvin Kamara. The point is, if the Saints can't run the ball and run the ball well, there are significant problems here. There needs to be an increased focus and commitment on it because what that does is allow Drew Brees to relax some, take some of the pressure off of him, decreases your risk of him throwing 15 interceptions again in another season. Then defensively, it keeps your defense off the damn field and limits the opportunities that the opposing offense has, puts more pressure on them. And for years of frustration of mine with the Saints has been, I feel like you could run the football a little better. You need to run it a little better and more often. And they just don't do it. And that's to their own detriment. And I don't see where that's going to get a whole lot different in 2017 because, again, I don't think Sean Payton and Drew Brees are going to get the hell out of their own way. Now, in terms of looking at this team and guys that are going to be really important, I think offensively the guy that's going to be most important is Kobe Fleener. He gave him quite a bit of money to come over from Indianapolis in free agency last season, and he was pretty much a disappointment in 2016. Now, with no Brandon Cooks, you've got Michael Thomas, you've got Willie Sneed again once he comes back from suspension, maybe somebody like a Brandon Coleman and so forth, but... They need Kobe Fleener to be that presence at tight end. They need him to be that short and intermediate option over the middle of the field. And if he can be, then this offense could potentially be just as good, if not better, than it was in 2016. On the defensive side of the ball, I looked to last year's first-round pick, Sheldon Rankins. 
He's a guy, a one-gap penetrating type of pass-rushing defensive tackle that the Saints were drooling over, that the Saints felt they really needed in their defense, and frankly, they did need a guy like this on their defensive line playing next to Cameron Jordan. Now they need Sheldon Rankins to be able to be healthy, to be on the football field, to actually play in every game, and bring that type of burst up the middle that this team really badly needs out of their defense. If you could get Sheldon Rankins to play at a first-round pick level alongside somebody like a Cameron Jordan, then honestly, it's going to improve your defense. You will be better, especially in terms of getting to the quarterback, which could disrupt other teams' passing games. Now, when I look at the Saints' schedule, um, I think a lot of their season, the story is going to be told very early on. The first four games of the season, three of them are on the road. You've got Minnesota week one in Minnesota. You got Carolina and Carolina week three, Miami and Miami week four. Oh, and the one home game that the Saints have at the Superdome, it's week two against the defending Super Bowl champion New England Patriots. So those are four games to start off the season, three of them on the road, where the Saints, to me, are the lesser team in all four games. If they start off this season anything better than one and three, I'd be traumatically surprised. And honestly, if they didn't start off the season 0-4, I'd be surprised too. And then you come back week 6 through 9, it kind of balances itself out a little bit. Three out of their next four games then would be at home at the Superdome, but it's Detroit. Then the one row game, you go to Green Bay. So you could argue you come back off of uh, the first four weeks, come back to Detroit, who should be a better team than you and was last year. Green Bay, who most certainly is a better team than you, and you've got to go to their place. Then you host Chicago, and you host Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, who should be better than you. I look at the first eight games that I just mentioned right there for the New Orleans Saints, and the only game I look at as potentially eminently winnable is the Chicago Bears. So this Saints team is staring down the barrel of a less than favorable opening schedule and digging themselves into a massive hole that they're just not able to come out of. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen this year. Now, there are parts of this as I was going through and I was evaluating New Orleans Saints. I'm like, man, they've brought in some young talent on the defensive side of the ball. They should be more balanced on offense. I think their offensive line is a little bit better. I want to get behind this team a little bit more, especially with Drew Brees as the quarterback. But also knowing that Drew is probably one big hit away from there being real problems. At some point in time, there's going to have to be some type of uh, regression, some type of fall off. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of that happened this year. And then just the fact, I, I, even with some of those improvements, I'm like, well, they improved from being terrible in certain spots. It still doesn't mean they're very good. And this opening stretch of the season, that first half of the schedule, is not very favorable. So you start off in a situation where you're 2-6, and 1-7, and 0-8, oh you know, which seems unlikely, but anything could happen. But 1-7, and 2-6 and six is very likely. At that point in time, the season is so close to done that a lot of players will start to pack up and quit, no matter how good the leadership is, no matter how good the coaching is. And that's what I think is going to ultimately sink this Saints season. I think they're a 5-11 and team at best. If they're lucky, maybe six wins, and they're going to finish in the butt-naked last of the NFC South. 